So our guest today is Kuang Lu. Kuang Lu is a Zen scholar and teacher ordained by Thich Nhat Hanh, who spent 16 years as a monk at Plum Village, Thich Nhat Hanh's monastery in France. A former prison chaplain, he is the author of The Buddha in Jail, Restoring Lives, Finding Hope and Freedom, 2019, and his second book, Wait, A Love Letter to Those in Despair, was just published two days ago. He is the founder of the Mine Only School in the Netherlands, where he teaches Buddhist philosophy and psychology. Kuang Lu is also this month's tricycle Dharma talk teacher, so I've been able to work with him and had a real pleasure of getting to know him. Um, and I re recommend you check it out. It's called Listening with Empathy. So I'm going to put the link for that in the chat. So thank you so much, Kuang Lu, for being with us today. And I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you very much, Elisa. Uh, dear friends, uh, first of all, I would like um, to invite you to practice uh, breathing with me. Uh, I will invite a bell and uh, you practice uh, breathing in, you know you're breathing in and breathing out, you know you're breathing out. When you follow your breath and you're breathing like that, you, you allow yourself to come back to yourself. You allow you to come back to yourself. You are, you are, you are more yourself when you practice breathing like that. So let's do that together. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, you are aware you are breathing in, breathing out, you are aware you are breathing out, just follow your breath, be yourself. You don't have to do anything, just follow your breathing. It is the wonderful, the wonderful practice. Dear friends, uh, every time I am uh, myself, every time I practice breathing to come back to myself, um, I have, I always have a deep connection with my teacher. If you look at myself, if you really look uh, at me, And uh, it means um, you're able to, to look in a deep way at me and you, you will see in me the presence of my teacher. My teacher is uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. I have been uh, practicing with him as a monk for 16 years with this teacher. And uh, two years ago, I went to the United States um, on my book tour. Uh, two years ago, I published the book, uh, The Buddha in Jail. And, and one day I gave uh, a talk uh, in, in a Sangha called uh, Wise No uh, There's No Flower Sangha. It's a Sangha in tradition of uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. 
and at the end the a young man the, came to me and he said huang lu you are thet nhak han you are you are thet nhak han so i am huang lu and i am also thet nhak han it's very interesting he saw that he saw that uh, i was my teacher uh, i am a teacher and and that is uh, wonderful that you can say that is my my discovery my breakthrough my um, my breakthrough because uh, when you follow your mind and your mind makes you believe that you are only yourself that that is your mind that's how your mind works your mind produce an image of yourself in the west we call that uh, ego ego is image of yourself and we all have uh, we all um, we are, we you all have an idea about ourselves and the moment uh, you are breathing like that breathing in um, you know you're breathing in and breathing out you know you're breathing out actually you're stopping your mind you stop the function the the the, the working of your mind if you really practice, practice breathing in, you practice breathing out, and you really follow your breath sincerely, and you become a living person, you become alive. Because the, the image uh, your mind uh, has about yourself, is is a death is a death image it's only an image that's not the reality you can call that an image or you can call that an, a concept an idea by yourself an idea by yourself is not your yourself uh, yourself you cannot describe you cannot describe yourself with an idea it's impossible who are you? Who are you? You have an idea by yourself, but you are not your idea. You are a living reality. You are such a wonderful person. I have, I have discovered that. The moment uh, I discovered um, myself, and there was a certain moment because I practiced uh, sincerely and, and yet uh, I could make the breakthrough. I, I had an idea by myself. I could not let it go. And uh, at a certain moment, it was in fact a very hopeless moment because I tried so hard to, um, to practice and I, I knew I still had an image of myself. And in my hopeless, uh, in a certain hopeless moment, certainly um, there was, um, there was uh, Was during the night in uh, 2010, I woke up and suddenly I felt such a great silence uh, in myself. And in that silence, um, the image of Kung Lu was not there. Kung Lu, there was, there was the absence of. Uh, the image of Kung Lu was, was absent. 
And instead of, of Kung Lu, I, I saw in myself uh, the presence of my teacher. And I was so happy when I, I saw that there was no any separation between me and my teacher. But because I was, uh, I could let go of the image of myself, I could also see there was no any separation between you and me, you, you who, who is listening to me now. There's no separation between you and me. We are the same. We have the same nature. So the moment, uh, that moment, I found myself. I saw myself. I saw my real, my real self for the first time, my true self for the first time. And I saw you too, because before that, I always uh, had ideas about people. I had contact with. I also had ideas about my teacher. But at that moment, I was free from all my ideas about my teachers. And uh, I was free from all my ideas about you and about me too. It's wonderful. It does exist that we are uh, connected in that way. It's, it's a wonderful connection. Wonderful was a wonderful moment. But from, from that moment on, it was in October 2010, I, I always can make connection with you. I remember the, after that, uh, I worked as a prison chaplain in the Dutch prisons. And I remember the, one, one day, I, uh, I met a prisoner and he just, uh, he was so hopeless and uh, nobody could make contact with him. So I say, let's send him to Quang Lu. And I remember I was in the, he was sitting in the room and I, I came in and I felt such, uh, I, felt, I felt the presence of, uh, of suffering in him and in me too, in him and in me too, at the same time. I could feel his suffering. It means I, I could feel his suffering. And he was surprised too, that the man who is entering the room, he can feel my suffering. Someone who, who is there and can feel suffering without judging. Because his suffering was my suffering. So I don't just, I, I was, I said to him, let us practice breathing together. Practice breathing. Let's do it again. Now, now I invited the, now the bell and let's uh, practice breathing together again. And if you do it well, you can be connected, be connected uh, with me or with your teacher, uh, your, uh, your father, your mother. Let's, let's try now. so wonderful to be connected. Can, can you feel my feeling? Yes, you do. Because I can feel your feeling too. 
and I, I could feel the, the suffering of the prisoners. So I asked him to, to sit down and to practice breathing with me. He, he was not a practitioner at all. He had never heard about Buddhism or something like that. But he understood me perfectly. So he sat down and he fo followed his breath. And after 20 minutes, uh, I felt a, a change in the energy. Instead of suffering, I felt kind of silence, kind of peace. So I, I opened my eyes and I looked at him and he looked at me like we are just one, you know, just, just we are one. There's no separation. So I opened my eyes and he also opened his eyes and he looked at me and he said, thank you. That's connection. You don't need to talk much. My suffering is your suffering in the being. You are me. In the being is our true nature. So when you are really yourself, you are also, also me. And, and that's how, that's how the, um, I, I told the stories in my first book, uh, The Buddha in Jail. Because I, I look at the prisoner and I saw the Buddha. <laughs> connection, you know, deep connection. If you're connected with the prisoner and you're connected to the Buddha, and he is you and he is also the Buddha. And, 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 and I look at each prisoner as a, a Buddha. And I could see that uh, there was that, I can see that there is the insight, compassion of the Buddha in each prisoner and in each human being. Can you imagine that? That is wisdom. Wisdom means, you know, you have wisdom. What is wisdom? When you have wisdom, it means, you know, you have wisdom. When, when you know you have the wisdom of the Buddha in you, it means you, it means you can make use of it. And, and I look at each prisoner and I saw the wisdom in each prisoner. And in that way, I, I send my trust to each of, each of them. I trust you have the insight and the compassion of the Buddha. Make use of it to free yourself. And I, they recognize my message. They, they, they all, they all could recognize um, my trust. They could all recognize that they, they were the Buddhas. And what I have seen there in, in the Dutch prison, uh, what happened when I practice like that with prisoners is unbelievable. I've written stories in a small book called The Buddha in Jail. And um, the second book I've written is, uh, is this book, just published uh, two days ago, Wait. Um, wait, don't, don't act from your mind full of misunderstanding and suffering, wait. And come back to yourself and you, you will find something very beautiful in yourself, in each of us. Because as, as a monk, I have always, uh, I wanted to meet the Buddha. My father passed away when I was uh, 14, 14. And what came from Vietnam to Holland for two years, and just a young boy and he, I miss my father. 
he became ill and after two weeks he passed away and I felt lonely. I, I was as a young, as, as a kid, 14 years old, uh, being lost in a new country. Every night I ask, uh, where are you daddy? I need you, I need you. I need your wisdom, I need your guidance. And my teachers um, introduced to me the Buddha. Uh, the Buddha, someone who is, he, he, he was a teacher, he's a teacher. He has deep insight, deep wisdom. So as a monk, I look for my father and I look for the Buddha also. And it's funny because my teacher was there and sometimes I look for my teacher also. Where are you, my teacher? Because I felt a separation between me and my teacher. I didn't understand that I was my teacher. The deep understanding came to me in year 2010. And from that moment, I didn't feel any separation. I don't feel any separation anymore between me and my teacher, between me and the Buddha, and between me and you. And, and, and I found the Buddha. It's very interesting. I found the Buddha. Because we, we think the Buddha has passed away 2,500 years ago. You cannot see the Buddha, but I do. And, and when you ask, uh, how does the Buddha look like? And I would say, uh, his face is your face. Your face is his face. Your face is the face of the Buddha. It's the Buddha's face. You are the Buddha. I found the Buddha uh, because I found you. You know, I have found the Buddha because I found you. And when I have found you, I have found myself too. It's the same. You are me and I am you. So let's practice uh, to experience that. Uh, breathing in, you can practice uh, like I am uh, my father. If you want to be him, uh, you can be practice uh, breathing in, I am my mother. Breathing in, uh, I am a flower. You can be a flower too. Breathing in, the, I'm blue sky. There's no separation between me and you. And there's no separation between me and the nature. There's no separation between you and the nature. So you, you can be anyone you like. And if you practice breathing in and out, you can feel that he is you, you are him. She is you, you are her. It's very uh, simple, but very deep practice. It, it brings a lot of um, happiness, real happiness to you when you are able to connect to the other person in this way. Shall we practice together? I invite this, the bell to sound and we practice breathing together, breathing in. And this time I practice to be my father. I found him too. Interesting. I, I, I was 14 when I asked, where are you, uh, daddy? And now uh, I can say, I am you. Father, I am you.
when you know the art of um, connecting, because you can make a contact. Contact, it means uh, there's a subject, there's an object, there's you, there's the other, and you can make contact, you can listen to the other as someone outside of you. And the art of um, connecting is the art of being the other. You are the other person. There's no subject, there's no object. And your suffering is his suffering. Your happiness is his happiness. You have the order to be happy. And his happiness is your happiness. His freedom is your freedom. In that way, um, you are not one person. Actually, you are not one person. You are everybody. You are not only a human being. You are also other species. Do you believe that? It's not a matter of belief. This is a practice. It's a beautiful practice. Because when you think uh, I am a separation, I'm only one. I am separated uh, from other people. I'm separated uh, from nature. We, we may damage the, the nature. And when you damage the nature, you're damaging yourself. That is what we are doing. And we are hurting the other people. We are hurting ourselves. I have written the book of weight because I've seen this happening in the world. People hurting each other. And instead of people helping each other, you know, we can help each other. But we often hurt each other because we are caught in our wrong perception in our mind. We believe I'm not you. When you do something uh, and you hurt me, I want to punish you. Punish. You are the cause of my suffering. And you want to punish the other person. Sometimes the other person is your beloved one. Someone who, who, who lives with you for many years. And you want to punish him. You want to punish her, punish her because you are caught in your wrong perception of your mind. So it's very important that we can understand our mind. I have set up uh, an institute, man only institute in Holland. And soon I will set up an institute like that in United States too. That's my dream. I'm going to do that. Because when people understand the functioning of the mind, uh, they can be free from the mind. Understanding how the mind works is very important. Buddhist psychology is it's the way I'm teaching. I'm teaching Buddhist psychology and Buddhist philosophy. And nowadays, uh, I've learned from my teacher the art of mindfulness. Mindfulness, how to be, how to be fully in the present moment. I, and, and, and I have discovered something very interesting. I have discovered to be mindful, to practice mindfulness, you need to master the art of mindlessness. <laughs> mindlessness, to be mindfulness. To master the art of mindfulness, 
you must know the art of mindlessness. Mindlessness, it means you, you're free from your mind, from your, all your own perceptions. That's very powerful. And instead of uh, punishing the other person who is hurting you, you're helping. I've been helping the prisoners. And there are people who ask me, why did you help them? And they hurt other people. Why did you help them? Now, they hurt other people and they hurt themselves too from the ignorance. And when you, you help them to understand themselves, they stop to hurt other people and they stopped to hurt themselves. Is that not beautiful? You, you know, I have a dream to, to share my practice with uh, American prisoners too. We have about 2 million prisoners in the United States. Can you imagine that? And they need a way. They need a way. They need to understand their mind. Of course, they, they, they can get a punishment for what they have done. But they, they need uh, to be helped uh, to understand their mind, to, under, to end their, their ignorance and to get in touch with their own insight, inside in each of us. You know, we, we suffer, we suffer in our daily life because we don't know we have insight and we are caught in our, the products of our mind, of our thinking, of our ideas, of our wrong perceptions. A simple practice uh, like breathing, and connecting, That's, that, that is what I want to share with you today. Breathing and connecting. When I am, I have connection with my teacher, I feel at ease. At that moment, I'm free from all wrong perception in my mind. And, and I still can feel the suffering when I suffer, but I suffer in a very different way. Because um, when you suffer with wrong perceptions, uh, you, you, you not only suffer, you suffer, you blame, you're afraid, and you blame yourself, you blame the other, you want to, you want to punish yourself, you want to punish the other. And that is suffering with a lot of wrong perceptions. That's, 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 that's what we often do. We blame each other, we punishing each other when we are in suffering. And when you understand your mind, you stop doing that. You come back to yourself, your true self. And at the same time, you are connecting We are deeply in connection with everything else. You can say that you are the whole cosmos. That is a reality. You, you are so important. You are so beautiful. You, if, if I try to find a word to describe you, I can call you by your name. But the best, best way to do that is to call you the Buddha, you are the Buddha. That's wisdom. If you look at someone, he could be your son who is suffering and who, who, and you are there, you have the way, you have the wisdom. And you look at him and you recognize, you can have his wisdom. And you sit there with, 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 a deep trust to your son. 
a deep trust to the trust in his wisdom in his insight and he can recognize that he, he knows right away and thanks to wish your wisdom you recognize his wisdom and thanks to your wisdom you help him to recognize his own wisdom That is how I have uh, helped the prisoners to be free from their real prison, prison of ignorance. They became uh, different people, very peaceful. Um, One day, a prisoner was attacked um, by our, the other prisoner. He fell down and he stood up, was very angry, and he wanted to kill the other. But suddenly, he remembered the practice, the teaching. Because uh, I offer him a teaching, a practice, a way to be connected with wisdom. And he told me at that moment, thanks to the teaching, I could let go of my anger and Guang, you save my life. And you save the life of the other, but also you save my life. He could stop, uh, he, could, he could take go of his anger. And when you, um, you are able to let go of your, your ignorance, your mind, you still suffer, but the suffering you have is um, It's not the same anymore. You know, I call that uh, when you are, you are able to be free from your illusions, you still see suffering, but you no longer suffer with blaming, with punishing, with, uh, you're just there with suffering. And in Buddhism, we call that suffering a noble truth, suffering as a noble truth. Experience that, that noble truth, suffering as a noble truth. Suffering is not a problem. It helps you to understand something very deeply. You need that. It is a noble truth. And in order to understand suffering as a noble truth, you need to understand the art of breathing and connecting. You know what? Uh, very soon I will be in United States and we will practice with you, share with you this practice because I believe now I, I know it's time. I have to conclude my talk now. And, and I have discovered the wisdom is also a virus. It's not coronavirus but it's also a virus and get infected very quickly. If you really trust the order, if you really get in touch with your wisdom and you discover the wisdom of the order, you get infected right away. Sometimes through the screen like this, <laughs> maybe infection is already taking place. And, and you know, and, and I believe, you know, that is the, the, the real answer for coronavirus problem. You need to spread the wisdom of wild virus. If you get infected uh, today by this virus, 
please spread this virus to your beloved ones. They need this. They need to discover their wisdom, their insight. And um, in order to, to remind you about uh, your wisdom, uh, I have uh, written this small book, Wait. Uh, please read the book and spread the virus. It's a new virus. Uh, it's not a dangerous virus. It's pleasant because this virus helps you to discover yourself. And as I say, I will be in the United States. I want to come and to bring this virus with me and to spread the virus as soon as possible. We need this uh, before it's too late. Because the way we are living uh, with our misunderstanding, we're destroying the nature of the species and we are in fact, we are committing a kind of suicide. You need to stop this. Stop this misunderstanding. And we need to spread uh, the wisdom. Thank you very much for listening. I wish I had more time to talk with you uh, about this. Uh, but we, we have uh, other occasions. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Kong Lu, for sharing those teachings and that practice with us. That was really lovely. Um, now we have time for a question and answer. And um, everyone, Kong Lu has asked us to make sure um, to try to keep your questions a bit concise so that we can get to as many people as possible in the time we have. Um, and also, if you have a question about your own life, your practice, any struggles you're facing, Kong Lu really wants to particularly hear those types of questions. Um, so you can either type out in the question and answer box that you can find through Zoom or through comments in Facebook Live. Or if you'd like to actually um, speak and ask your question, um, please click the raised hand button and I'll get to you. And then once you ask your question, please um, click it again to sort of lower your hand. Um, so thank you so much. And I'll give a second for people, for everyone to gather your thoughts and to begin to share your questions. Okay, um, Truce, I'm going to allow you to talk and please ask your question then. Thank you. Hello, I'm Trish from the Netherlands. Hello. Um, hello. Um, I was again thinking about my friend in Rome. She is, she lost a year ago her daughter of 33. Uh, his daughter took her life and it was very, um, um, of course, not 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 prepared for this, and the mother, my friend, is um, feeling very sad and very um, guilty. Also, can you tell me anything about it? Uh, I can feel her pain. I can feel her suffering. And um, I can feel the suffering of her daughter too. When you're taking your own life, um, you are in, in hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And um, that is why I have written this book. I want to people I want, I want to be there in a form of uh, a book to give the support to, 
to people who are in hopelessness and who believe there's no way out of suffering. In fact, uh, there is always a, there's always a way out of suffering. Also about the guilt he's feeling? Yes, the guilt too, the guilt too. Um, the guilt is also suffering. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we are not strong enough to, to face suffering. I have discovered we are too weak to face suffering and suffering has become a problem in our society. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I, um, I help people to do the practice of connecting, connecting, connecting with someone you love, someone you mm -hmm. trust. And in this case, a mother, when she is suffering a lot with uh, guilt feeling, feeling, she can make connection with her teacher or with her daughter, say, my darling, please help me. Mm -hmm. And she, her daughter will be there. That's the power mm -hmm. of connection. You think she's gone, but she's there. I say, mm -hmm. please be here with me, darling. I'm too, it's too painful. Tell me what I need to do and she will be there with you. And she will tell you what to do. Maybe you need to do from that pain, you might understand what you need to do to help people, other people who are having the same problems. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and by understanding, by truly understanding your pain, your suffering, and you can transform it into action, love in action, understanding in action, wisdom in action, compassion in action. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, but, um, if you, you don't can make connection, uh, you are caught by your wrong, um, wrong, wrong perception from your mind. And that suffering can be very, uh, can stay very long time. And it does not, uh, and, 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 and if we can truly uh, uh, see, uh, we are, can be truly in connection and see the true face of suffering and you see suffering won't stay very long and it, it has the power to lead you to action, to express your love, to express your wisdom because in every suffering there is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We, we, all, we all can learn from our mistakes, our suffering. We need to. And we can do better. So, so we can do what we can to be sure that other young people don't make the same mistake. That's what we can learn from, from our, our own um, situation, our own suffering. So instead of feeling guilty, you can transform it into a kind of power. And I've seen many people do this. They can, they can connect with their suffering, with the reality, and they transform the suffering into power, into wisdom, into action. My teacher called that love in action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kong Lu. Um, Alina, I'm going to allow you to talk now so you can ask Kong Lu your question. I saw on the screen that someone wrote, uh, when will I come to the US? And my answer is as soon as possible. And I'm already there. 
I'm already in your, your heart. I'm, I'm already there in the form of books because I, I believe with the books, I can share what I have discovered uh, and you can apply uh, my uh, discovery in your daily life. And um, so I, that's, I, I'm already there in the form of my books. So please uh, uh, make friends with my books and uh, read the books and share this insight, your insight with other people. I will be there soon, as soon as possible. I want to be there. Can I talk now? Yes, please, yes. Oh yeah, well, my name is Elena and I have a question about, um, I have a sister, we're from Peru and she had, uh, she had some problems for a long time and she's been suffering many, many different ways and I tried to help and, uh, and, and all the family got isolated from her because the way she is. And I tried to practice love and compassion towards her and I did it over and over. And things didn't turn out good. So I got to the point that I, I just moved away from her because I was feeling sad, sometimes angry. And then I just let it be. I just separated myself from her. And I recently found out that uh, I guess she was diagnosed as she had bipolar and so now i i want to reach out to her again because i'm thinking well it wasn't really her it was the bipolar situation but anyway but uh, so what's your what are your thoughts on that when somebody has a problem like that a psycho well not psychological but a mental problem yes um when, 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 I, when I met the prisoners uh, who have suffered so much, and the first thing I did was I didn't try to transform their suffering. Mm. And, and that's, 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 that's is a very basic mistake we often make. We make choice. You know, this is better than that. I am, it's not the same like you. I am better, I am less, I'm the same. And you compare, we compare. And when we compare happiness and suffering, and we choose for happiness. And if, if you are truly free from your mind, you, you, you discover suffering as suffering, and you, you appreciate, you will see how wonderful suffering is. As suffering, and you don't try to transform it. You don't judge it, because any act of trying to transform to transform suffering is already judging, suffering, already suppressing judging, and 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 you're already caught by your mind. Right, but it was making me making me feel sad, and 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 I felt the suffering because she's my sister. But that's and, okay. and so so I should just uh, continue suffering or not or not see it as suffering, right? You need to see suffering and you need to see oh. her suffering as your suffering too. And you, you know, the most beautiful thing is it's okay to suffer. Why not? Why not? You suffer, I am here, I suffer with you. We Which are the suffering, the suffering, together. But the suffering was affecting my life and my husband's life and my, my life, my little life. But I guess I was being selfish. Suffering is always much more than you think. Hmm. When, when you really understand her suffering deeply, uh, you, discovered, um, you discover a more beautiful life uh, through, through your understanding of her suffering. You appreciate life more when you understand suffering deeper. When you see the true face of suffering, you also see the true face of happiness. So if you're really there, you can feel someone suffering deeply. And at the same time, you're not discovering only suffering, you're also discovering the true face of happiness. Um, looking deeply into suffering, if you really look deeply in it, with our uh, not true an idea, but to see it as a reality, 
you always discover many things in suffering. Mm. A love, a compassion, um, wisdom, uh, happiness. It makes your life richer. And if you get in touch with suffering and your life become poor, it means you have not been getting in touch with suffering yet. Mm, good point. Okay. You know, you, you only have an idea about suffering and you're not really touching it as a re reality. Uh -huh. If you're touching it as a reality, you're touching happiness as a reality too. Because mm -hmm. um, in true suffering, you see true happiness. And, and in true happiness, you also see true suffering. If you don't see suffering in happiness, uh, uh, there is some the object of your, this, of the, the, what you call happiness is in fact greed. In greed, you don't have suffering. But if it's really happiness, it is also suffering in your happiness. Look in happiness, you see suffering, and look deeply in happen in suffering, you see happiness. Uh, okay, thank you very that, much. I'll practice that. That thank is you. a nature. That is a nature of in the being. Like you look deeply into me, you see yourself, and you look deeply into yourself, you see your sister. We in the. Hour. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Kong Lu. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to get to any more. But if anyone would like to um, ask your question, um, please watch Kong Lu's talk on Tricycle site, where you can leave a comment and questions for Kong Lu. You can see a box, ask the teacher a question, and you can leave questions there. I'm just going to put the link to that in our chat here one more time. Um, and I just want to remind everyone um, that we have more live talks, live sessions coming up. So please go to tricycle.org slash live to see the upcoming schedule. Um, you can also view the recordings there. So to rewatch this talk with Kong Lu, you can go to Tricycle's YouTube page or our Facebook page. Um, and from tricycle.org slash live, you can also make a donation to support these free offerings. So I want to hope that everyone is healthy and safe and ask you Kong Lu for any parting words you have for us. Um, this, this, I want to say the last thing is um, the most wonderful thing we can do when we suffer is to be there for each other. I want to be, if we continue to live in this way, just only caring about ourselves and not about others. And we will have more difficulty uh, in the future as a society. So I want to be with you, with all of you in this difficulty to remind you one thing, you are the Buddha. Please don't forget that you are the Buddha and please have to be with each other. Help. Please be with each other and to help each other that we are Buddhas. Spread this virus. It's a virus of wisdom. Spread it. Thank you very much.